Okay, so today I wanted to make a, a video basically about drafting. You need to be able to obviously read a draft in order to be able to uh, follow the pattern, you know, and, and thread your heddles and obviously use the proper treadles in order to get the pattern that you want. I borrowed this copy from my guild and I find it actually to be a phenomenal resource. Uh, I want to buy, wanted to buy a copy for myself. It is out of print in Canada, but I did see some for sale in the US. So that is something definitely uh, to look into. Check your public library. I don't know if they would have that. If you're part of your uh, Weavers Guild, then obviously take a look at uh, whether or not they have this resource as well. As you look through this, uh, Madeline uh, Vanderhoot, uh, she does a, has done a lot of uh, different um, lessons in terms of weaving. Uh, but as you go through it, basically, and you look at it, there's different types. It shows you how to read a draft, different patterns. There's lots of exercises throughout the actual uh, book to help you. I'm working my way through the book right now, so uh, I'm by no means an expert, but I'm, I've obviously got the basic mechanics down uh, to be able to... Um, to follow. So what I did here is I just took a basic grid and if you actually take a look here, you're going to look at a pattern. For example, let's say if we take a look at hand woven, for example, um, you look at patterns in the back. Uh, let's take a look here. Okay. And usually you'll, uh, let's see what we got here. No, that's for rigid heddle. Okay. So you take a look here. All right. And you look at it and it looks really, really confusing and very stressful to, to try and figure out. So again, um, we're going to kind of break that down for you. Okay. So when you look at an actual draft, usually I I've tended to see it's in this configuration. It could be in a configuration going this way, for example, again, don't panic. It's the same thing. All right. Okay. So let's take a look at, uh, what a basic pattern will look like. You've got here the amount of harnesses, okay? So I have a four harness loom, so I'm always gonna look that there's only four of these. Obviously, if you had an eight harness loom, 16 and so forth, these boxes obviously would be a lot bigger. Up here, basically, is your treadles, okay? I'll write that in. Okay, oh, yeah, you can see that. So the treadles here, I'm gonna be only using four treadles. On my actual floor loom, I have a Fanny LeClaire loom, uh, I have six treadles, but it's telling me I'm only gonna use four out of those six treadles, which is great to see. This here is the pattern that you're gonna put the threading through your heddles, okay? So, and then basically here are the different treadles you're gonna press in that particular order, okay? So let's go through this really, really uh, quickly first. So you've got, for example, um, in this case here, all right, I'm going to go on harness and then basically you've got harness number one, two, three, and four. Okay. So on harness one, I'm going to put through the first treadle. Okay. And it sometimes will tell you like in the numbers here, it's telling you harness one, two, three, four, but sometimes you'll see in a pattern, it might only have dots or it might only have slashes, but again, that's the case. So the first heddle will be on harness one. The second one will be on the two, three, four, and you're literally following it along in order. So in this case here, if you re look across, I've got basically uh, 18 heddles that I am going to actually be threading, okay? And if I look downwards, I'm going to be basically putting in the weft. Uh, there's 18 rows here. I'll be putting in the weft through 18 times in order to get that little portion here. Now, obviously in a pattern, they might have things that say repeat, for example, that you're repeating a section. So the question I always had is that when I learned how to uh, weave, because a lot of my weaving is self-taught with the help of a really good friend um, who also is self-taught. And so she helped me qu uh, quite a bit. And I strongly support, I strongly suggest having some sort of support mechanism when you're learning how to weave. Uh, you know, there's Facebook groups, obviously you can ask questions. Guilds are an excellent uh, place, obviously, to join and get support as well. Uh, other weavers are great at being able to share their knowledge and little tips that they've learned along the way as well. Me, when I first learned, I understood how to thread, how to press the treadles, but I didn't understand that by looking at this, how did you know what pattern you were going to end up with? Which is why I borrowed actually uh, the complete book of drafting for hand weavers was to try and learn that because then if I know what kind of pattern I want, I can go backwards and figure out, well, what threading would I need? What kind of uh, treadles will I need? And I'm not going to give a, a lesson on that. It's a bit more complicated, but just to understand what you're going to do. So let's take a look here. Okay. Here is going to be the tie up. All right, right in this section here. So if I have harness, sorry, treadle number one, 
I'm going to tie up harness number one and two to treadle number one so that when I press it, it's going to pull down these two harnesses. Then you've got basically the next one, okay, we'll pull down harness number two and three, three and four, and then one and four. This is not an unusual, uh, an unusual um, tie up to have. Okay, so the question would be though, how do you know if I'm pressing down treadle to one, which is going to pull down the harnesses, one and two, okay, how do I know what that's going to basically look like? So I'm going to use a ruler because my eyes tend to uh, not track so well. So every time I see a number one along here, I'm going to color it in. Okay, so I, I'm coloring in this one, this one, this one, and this one. So that's for every harness one, these ones are going to be filled in as I put my weft through. Also, when I pull down, um, the, uh, put down, push down this treadle, the tre treadle, uh, uh, it's going to also fill in two. So I'm going to color in two anywhere that it is. Now in this one here, this pattern looks fairly, uh, very uh, pattern like. That's not necessarily always the case uh, when you, you know, when you're actually looking at a pattern. Now let's go down to the next one here, okay? So if I pull down, for example, push down this treadle here, okay, because again, I've got a floor loom, all right? Then basically every time I see a two or a three, that's what's gonna be colored in. So I've got a two and a three, two, three, Oh, I got a three here, got a two, two and a three, and a two and a three. Okay? So as you work your way down, and I'm gonna do that in a moment, I'm not gonna show you everything basically, but as you work your way down, it's going to start showing yourself a pattern, okay? So give me a second to do that and I'll come back and show you what your uh, what it's gonna look like. Okay, so I've done a few rows as we've gone down, okay? And you can see basically a pattern is starting to emerge as you do this, all right? And obviously I didn't finish it. Again, you could do something like this at home, finish it on your own just to see what the rest of the pattern would actually look like. So if we just could do a quick review, okay? If I look at the first line here, I should have all the one and twos should be filled in. This line here, all the twos and threes should be filled in. This one here, all the three and fours should be filled in. And then this one here, all the one and fours should be filled in, okay? And then I just follow and go down and continue to do it in whatever pattern it happens to say. Now, sometimes in these patterns, you're gonna see different colors. So for example, you know, I don't know, perhaps you're using blue and red and this one is shown in a color blue and this one's shown in a color red. Well, obviously, the, when you're putting through the weft, you're basically uh, gonna obviously use a blue thread for this one, maybe a red thread for that one and so forth. Uh, or they'll indicate what, you know, what section should be what colors and so forth. So that's just getting into more complicated patterns. I would start off obviously something very simplistic and slowly build your way up. So for example, uh, in uh, the hand woven here, I really love these towels, but when I actually look at the pattern of these towels, they're very narrow and I want to make uh, dishcloths. These are, finger, I believe they're finger, uh, finger towels, I think, uh, fingertip towels, that's what they are. And I wanted to make them wider and longer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the uh, pattern and I'm going to draw it out on this graph paper right here. And I'm gonna see what the basic pattern is because I want to start it off like this, the same as them. I wanna finish it off the same as them, but I don't know how many of these squares I would actually need. And the problem is, is that, excuse me, by looking at the actual threading, I don't know what the threading does that completes one full square basically for myself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw what they've got and then I'm going to take a section. So for example, let's say we wanted to do this and we wanted to manipulate it. This is only basically 22, uh, 18 threads. Let's say you wanted to have something much wider, okay? So you know basically that everything is going to, um, it's gonna look like this. If you keep repeating it, it's just gonna keep making it longer and longer and longer as you go along, okay? But you can also decide that you want things to be symmetrical, okay? So again, depending on what the, the pattern happens to be, if there's something on one side and there's something on the other side and you want it to, to look the same on both sides, you would start and end with that. So for example, if I wanna have, 
you know, this is one border. I would do the same at the other end and then have some sort of other pattern in the middle. I could do that as well, okay? There are so many books of um, weaving drafts that show you different patterns and so forth, and you can incorporate them. Again, as long as you've got the correct number of harnesses and the correct number of treadles, you can actually um, do that and become very, very creative as a result. So I hope that helps and uh, let me know uh, if, uh, if there's anything else that uh, you need to know. I'm still learning myself, obviously, as a beginning uh, weaver. I've only been with it for a couple of years myself. Uh, but uh, again, these are things that you kind of learn and um, I'm glad that I'm, I've been able to figure out that based on this, I can now figure out what the actual drawing will be because if I want to change it around, I can go backwards and say, okay, I want this pattern to look like this. So if it looks like this, for example, okay, I would need to know, all right, that basically, okay, this is going to be one and two, or these ones will always all be the, the same ones, right? And slowly working your way back. I haven't done that a whole lot uh, at this point, to be perfectly honest. That will take a lot more practice on my part to, to get there. But uh, I love the idea of being able to do that in future. Have a great day.